What's up, everybody? It's John with John Sports Talk Collectibles coming at you with a brand new video. How is everyone doing out there today in the YouTube universe? Today, we're going to be opening up another vintage comic book pack. This time, it's from 1979, and it's a Marvel Multimag that I picked up on eBay. And this is awesome. You can see the Fantastic Four as the Facebook here. I'm hoping the condition on these books are, are good. They look pretty good in the pictures. Um, again, it's hard to tell when you're looking on eBay. I mean, you can kind of zoom in a little bit, but sometimes the pictures get a little bit blurry if they weren't scanned on a high-res scanner or had good pictures taken. But this one looked pretty good. I'm looking at it. It doesn't look too bad. Hopefully there's no major spine ticks. Uh, hopefully these pages are white. And, um, you know, we're going to get this open. There's two comic books in this one. This is from 1979. Here is the top of the bag here. Has not been uh, resealed or anything, so this is an original. Uh, I guess the code is 11402276. I guess that's the code right here. Um, I have not found any. Um, there is a website on Marvel, Marvel Multimags, but I don't know if they. I guess they do have this one listed. I had to double check that. This one is a legitimate one. Um, this, there's a website out there. We usually put the link in, down below in the description to this particular website. And uh, they uh, have done a lot of research on comic book uh, packs as a whole from, you know, from the, uh, from, you know, vintage comic book packs from the seventies and, uh, have a pretty good database, especially on Marvel Multimags. They've got a decent one on DC Super Packs too, but they kind of like stop, um, after 73, they might only have one year. Uh, so it gets a little dicey if you're looking for things on eBay to be able to verify that they're for real. Um, but this one is. So this one you could have bought back in the day for 79 cents. Let's get into it. You got Fantastic Four 212 here. I actually own this comic book. Um, but it has a slash to the barcode, which means it was a cutout or I maybe it was a, considered a reprint. I don't know how that works with the, with the slash. Does this one have? This one does not have that. So that's excellent. And this other book on the other side I do not have. And we're going to get into that too. Because this character on the other side is super hot right now. The brand new movie that just came out. Um, and we're going to get into that in a second. Let's get this open. So a very, very old product here. Did I cut it right? Yes, it did. Okay, let's get these books out of here. Gently. You can see the dirt on this, on this bag. So that's old, and this is cool. So this has got Galactus and Skrull. Is that who, the, who this guy is? Um, so there you go. And you can see the Fantastic Four is aging badly here. So I don't know the whole premise of the story. Um, maybe I'll look into it. We'll come back at the end. We give our pricing. I'll add on anything that maybe is unique about this particular issue. Number 212 from November 1979. Okay, let's take a look at this book. And you can see the Lego ad on the back of this one. Let's see how the cover looks on this. It looks, it looks really nice. I mean, this looks like brand new. And let's see if there's any spine ticks down here. Because I don't really see any. Let me just pull it over here so I can slip by. I mean, I don't see any really at all. I'll have to run my finger over this uh, once we put it in a, in a, in a bag of the board, which are right next to me over here to the right. Uh, but that's a really nice cover right there. I mean, a very nice cover. This corner down here, there's a little something happening, but nothing major in my opinion. Down here is very sharp. Up here seems to be very pretty sharp, and along with this one here. So a very nice book to start out the cover here. This Fantastic Four 212. Let's take a look inside. Okay. I think these are be you've got the Super Factory Super, super Gifts and Gimmicks. There's a printing flop here, the top, but I don't think that's going to be anything major. These pages look white to me. I would consider these white pages. So a nice clean book. Let's look at the back and go on to the next one. So a little something happening down here. Um, you can see the cut right here. So I don't know how, uh, but the sables, everything looks, this is a great, great copy of this. I mean, a very clean one. There's a little something happening here, a little fold. But the press will fix that. That's minor. But this looks really nice. Let's just take a look and see. Uh, okay, so there are some sort of like 
these indentations back here, which could mean there might be a little, some spine things that we can't see because of the whiteness. I'm sorry, I had this down. So, but in general, this is a great, great book. Let's put that one over there for now. Okay. Now this one I don't have. And I recently found the number one of this book that I do have. And it is like, Worse than a reader copy. <laughs> it's, I must have read it over and 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 over. And it is it's just, it's in bad shape, this this number one of this release. But it's, this is Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man. This is number 36. The Killer Bees of Swarm. Um, and uh, I, real, I wonder if, I have to look and see. I'll look into it before we come back at the end of this video and see when the Killer Bee craze was. Um, if you guys are old enough to remember, there was a fear of Killer Bees coming from other continents, Africa, I think, or wherever, and uh, coming to America. And, and, and uh, so there was, there was there, and then you had the movie The Swarm, too. So I wonder if that has something to do with this, this character. And, uh, you know, that's why they created this character, to kind of jump on the hype train of uh, The Swarm movie and... Um, all the, all the hoopla that was going on in the, in the news media. But this cover is really nice, too. Wow. Very nice clean cover. There's a little something happening right there where my thumb is. But um, I don't know what that is. A little blemish, but you can barely see it. Let me turn the light. And there are a couple little, like, ticks but up here, but you can barely see them. Um... And I'll take a look at the spine again. But again, you get the barcode here. So a newsstand copy of uh, number 36, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man. And obviously Spider-Man's super hot right now. The new movie that just came out. Um, the number one I have, like I was just saying, is, is of this um, of this uh, particular Spider-Man run. And uh, I think it's got like the... Uh, who's the guy? Tarantula or somebody with has spikes on his on his feet. But like I said, the the condition of the book is terrible. I would love to get my hands on a clean copy of that um, of that book at some point. But here you got the super gifts and gimmicks. We didn't look inside the back of the other one, which we'll do on this one. Probably will have the same ads. But um, this is pretty cool. The pages look to be. I'd say these are going to be considered a white, maybe off white, but. Again, I have soft light in the in the where I'm filming this soft white light, which tend to make the pages look a little bit um, uh, more creamy than they normally are. But um, but this might be uh, these might be considered white pages. I'm looking through my screen here. Okay, let's look at the back real fast. Again, very nice clean back. Minor little indentations back here. I think this 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 these two books will grade out very very high. Let's take a look at the ads in the back. There's Lego. I think these books are both going to grade out high. Now the value that's a whole other question. Um, okay, so let's see. You've got uh, Revolutionary War soldiers and prizes or cash. The typical ads they tend to put in the back in these comic books. The corners of this book. Let's just look one more time. Look pretty nice. I don't see any. And maybe a tad, a little bit of a speck there. This corner looks. Eh, there's, eh, there's a little something there. Nothing major, in my opinion. There's good. And then let's just look one more time here at this side. Try to be as gentle as I possibly can. That's very sharp. Okay. So we're going to put these in bags and board them up and uh, come back with some numbers for you. And, uh, yeah, so hang tight, everybody. Hey, everyone, we're back. Let's just get into this real quick. Um, we've got, uh, got some questions on this amazing Spider-Man, spectacular Spider-Man, sorry. Um, it's kind of strange because there have been, um, <clears throat> this is not a, a book people have really run out and uh, graded. I don't know if people have missed the boat on this one or what the story is. There have been only 23 in existence graded. Um, and I am going to get this graded at some point because the condition on this book is like fabulous. And this might end up getting close, probably at least a nine, six, if not a nine, eight, because there is really not much wrong with this book at all. And I don't even know if this is even going to get a press or not. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but this is a great, 
just condition. The condition of this book is great. Really, the only the only uh, big thing about this book is that you know Swarm is the antagonist in there, and it's like his resurrection. Uh, there are some other characters mentioned in a recap. I didn't look closely at the book, but like Black Widow, White Dragon, might be a couple other ones, um, other characters in, in the recap. But um, a cool book and maybe a sleeper. So I'm going to keep my eyes open on this one to see if, you know, any start popping up uh, on eBay. I looked on eBay, I looked on Comic Link, looked on Go Collect, and um, there are none being sold. There are, actually, I'll take that back. There are, no, I did, there are none being sold. There have been 12 9.8s and three 9.6s and 23 total that have been graded. Um, okay, this Fantastic Four, though, is a different story. And, and I'm one of the lucky few that has the newsstand copy because there's a lot of copies that have been graded that have the slash through this this barcode, which I'm not sure if that means a second print or if it's a cutout or how that worked or, you know, what that actually means. But there's a slash going down through that barcode. And uh, so I've got a good one here. And the condition on this book is phenomenal, too. I mean, there's really, I can't even really feel spine ticks on this book and the cover Seems to be flawless. I mean, again, this is going to... I don't even know if I'm going to even clean these. I may not even press them out because they look perfect. Now, this is what holds a lot more value. Um, and, you know, and looking at these prices, I, I'm kind of just uh, scratching my head on, on the way that people decide they're going to... what they're going to charge for these books because some of them are listed. They're not even covering their, their grading costs, a lot of them. It just makes zero sense to me. Um, I think these, I think a lot of people, and this goes for the trading card world too. I think people are really under, undervaluing, devaluing their own product they're trying to sell, their own cards, they have greater comic books. And I really think that needs to change. Um, you know, unless you're super desperate and you've got like the electric bill to pay and you're willing to give things away, um, then maybe go ahead and do it. But in my opinion, why lowball yourself and don't do auctions folks. Do buy it now. I, I can't even stress that enough. I, I you would. I'm shocked at the uh, when I look at the trading cards. For example, is our primary thing that we do here on our channel. I look at these auctions and I can't believe what some of these cards are being you know sold for. And like, why are you gonna put something up for an auction and have it sell for fifteen dollars? You're not even getting back your your cost on uh, on grading a card. The same thing goes for comic books too. I just am noticing this. I'm like, boy, I think these people are inexperienced. A lot of them. Um, so if you're going to sell things, my, my, my opinion, do it by now. You want to do an auction of higher end things. That's different. If you're going on one of the auction sites, but on eBay, don't even waste your time doing auctions. You're going to end up losing money in the long run. Okay. Sorry. I got a little sidetracked back to this fantastic four. Okay. Currently listed there on the old eBay, uh, a couple nine fours, one for 40 again. Why so low? I don't get it. Um, one for 70, a nine, six for one seventy five. Okay. That makes more sense. There's a nine, eight listed for three, $365. That makes sense. Okay. These lower amounts though, for just a, a, a 0 0.2 difference. I mean, you got to kind of think that one through folks and you're listing stuff. Don't, don't lowball yourself, um, or yourselves. So sold though, recently nine for $42. Ridiculous. Too low. Unbelievably. Just, you gave the book away. Whoever sold that one, a nine, two for, for 60 K. So kind of gave it away for nothing. A nine, six for 85. They gave, they gave, they're they giving these books away for nothing. It makes no sense to me. Uh, this one has Watcher as the main antagonist, Galactus and, and Sphinx, um, which I'm guessing is him. I've never never heard of him before. We do have this one in the collection. I was a big Fantastic Four guy, but somehow this guy's gone over my head. There have been 104 of this graded, uh, 52 have sold, supposedly on Go Collect. Uh, 33, 9.8s, 36, uh, 9.6s, uh, you know, those numbers on that side, I just kind of reference them. Um, nothing on comic, on a comic link sold, uh, no listings either. I mean, perhaps there are other auctions in the past. There's just nothing currently up. So again, these will both be great. This one might even go in the next round of, of, of books since, um, I don't want to forget about it and I'm putting together our next order. Uh, to go out before the price changes go into effect with CGC, because that's going to be happening soon, the next few weeks, unfortunately. Uh, not a major increase, but enough where, like, you know, you send in and start sending in more books, you're going to end up paying more, a uh, larger amount in the long run. So um, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. I love this. I love finding these old Marvel Multimags. When I, I found another one, actually, we have two coming in, two more coming in, and um, some old other uh, just generic comic book bags. 
from um, from the uh, early 80s, and I'll be showcasing those as well. They're fun for me. Um, you know, you guys out there in YouTube land, maybe you're seeing books maybe you've never seen before, or maybe you've never seen this kind of condition before, so it's a plus. A lot of people seem to be kind of slowly, you know, getting interested in what we're what I'm doing over here. Um, and it's like buying, uh, someone pointed out in a comment months ago, it's like buying an old vintage pack of baseball cards and you're getting like these pack fresh cards and you open up a, an authentic pack. Same thing goes with these kind of uh, bags. And I've noticed that, uh, the prices on these have, have kind of risen and I'm wondering if it has something to do with me showcasing, since I'm the only channel out there that has, uh, showcased this stuff. So, um, again, we'll have more of these coming up, uh, in the, in the near future, I want to thank everybody for stopping by today, spending some time out of your day and watching our, our latest uh, video. Um, our first order from CGC should actually be showing up in the next few days. I'll we'll reveal that once it comes in. It's part one of three. There's two other order, two other parts of the order that are still there with them. I don't know why they just didn't send it all back at one time, but uh, they are grading this, finishing up. This, the second one's done, the grading, they have it in cap, they're, whatever it is. I don't know what the grades are on the second batch and the third batch is, is being graded. So, um, uh, but as soon as the first one comes, you're going to see, like I said, a second eBay store opening up. That's going to have comic books on there. Uh, some of the collectible items, um, uh, some magazines, uh, maybe a few sports memorabilia. I might shift some of that over. I'll oh, we'll leave it where it is. Uh, but maybe some sports magazines, wrestling, things like that. Uh, things that are in my collection I have no use for anymore and why not list them on eBay. Maybe somebody else would be interested in picking those kind of things up. So as soon as that uh, store gets launched, you know, you'll know it here. I'll talk about it here in one of our videos. And you'll start seeing the links showing up down in the description of our videos. Um, and I'm hoping that happens in the next week or so. So that's it. So anyway, remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. You know the whole spiel. Share this video with your friends and loved ones. Our current eBay store with all of our cards listed is down below in the description. The link for that is down below in the description. And um, we'll be back with uh, another video this week. And remember, we have our auction this coming Saturday. And from 8 to 10 p.m., we'll cover a preview video for that coming up soon as well. So hopefully you like this one today. It's lots and lots of fun to showcase these, uh, these two books. I'm glad I found them. Cut a deal with the uh, eBay seller. I thought it was a good deal. And um, these things are prime, these two books. So uh, definitely a win for the uh, channel here and for the collection as well. Okay, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks again for stopping by. This is John Jones, Sports Collectibles. Signing off an eight. I'll see you.